Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. Today I'm going to talk about <clears throat> two things. First is this classic Pride and Prejudice. It's uh, written in, uh, I think it's 1813 by Jane Austen, and my opinion of it, meh. Now, you could attribute this to me being a stupid, un, <clears throat> a stupid, um, you know, unsophisticated, dumb American guy, but I just had, I just kept on having trouble getting into this, because um, really, for the most part, the whole, it just wasn't for me, but like I can recognize that <clears throat> a lot of people did like it. And I just, I just had a hard time getting through it. Like, um, um, I, it's just so many times where I'd be reading it and I'd find myself wandering off and thinking about something else, and <clears throat> just hard for me to get through. Now I'm gonna talk. Now the next book was uh, made by Seth Graham Smith, the same person who made the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter and he made this Pride and Prejudice and Zombies <clears throat> now this one I had a lot more fun with um, and though I still had like an occasional little thing of zoning out and boredom I you know I was, uh, I really enjoyed it there's you know a lot more fun action zombies killing and um, I didn't find the character Elizabeth Bennett really at all interesting. In this version, she's a complete she's psycho she's psychotic. And here's a little um, there's like a chapter in here um, is. Yeah, right about here. There's a chapter here where she faces down with a bunch of with the three ninjas. Yes, that's right, ninjas. <laughs> like this movie wasn't like this book wasn't already crazy enough already, and it demonstrates how much of a complete psycho that the this character Elizabeth is. Like, there's one part where she like decapitates one ninja, then. Um, she strangles like another another guy with his own intestines, and then there's a part where she like stabs a guy, reaches into his chest, pulls out his beating heart, and like and uh, chews on it, eats it. I'm assuming it's not beating when she starts biting into it, because that would be really yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah but yeah, there's um. It's much easier getting into this than that one ever was, and and um, yeah, who made the? There's a thing here. But I'll they'll show you who made the illustrations. They're, like there are a bunch of these illustrations, like even more so than this one. And I what thing that I thought was funny was um, there are these um. So, uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, a reader's discussion guide. Like, um, there's, um, first there's talking about the dual nature of Elizabeth's uh, personality. Another funny one is, uh, does Miss Bennett have a single redeeming quality? And <clears throat> then there's this funny thing at number, at, at, um, where it says, uh, some scholars believe that the zombies were a last-minute addition to the novel as a request by the publisher in a shameless attempt to boost sales. Others argue that the hordes of living dead are integral to Jane Austen's plot and social commentary. <clears throat> yeah. What do you think? Can you imagine what this novel would be like without the violent zombie mayhem? <laughs> like... <laughs> I just laughed at that one. Like, yes, what do you think this book would be like without the zombie apocalypse aspect of it? Well, in the end, um, uh, 
rating for this, I guess, would be 3 out of 5. I had a hard time getting into it, but there are plenty of other fans of this. Otherwise, it would not have lasted for so long of a time. And uh, this one, 4 out of 5. I, I still had an occasional bout of uh, zoning out and getting bored and whatnot. But <clears throat> it was just way more enjoyable and fun. And but that's just my opinion. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, oh yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, stuff based on other stuff that was made a really, 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 really long time ago, I saw Snow White and the Huntsman <clears throat> just yesterday, and my opinion of it was. I liked it. I, I liked it a lot. <clears throat> and, uh, like, what specifically? Well, um, well, there, there were a lot of plot holes or, and scenes that just felt like they went nowhere. Like, the biggest one was, um, like, why didn't the queen just kill her, like, right, right then and there? Like, it, it was kind of hinted at that the prince had a thing for Snow White, but... Like, the, uh, the Queen's brother had a thing for her. But, um, yeah. And, and there was, um, like, a lot of stuff that comes just out of nowhere. Like, the dwarves come out of nowhere. And there was this scene with fairies, which, and, which ends with them, like, meeting a white stag, which seems to, doesn't really seem like has any much of a point. And, um... Then there was this other. Then there's uh, there's uh, oh yeah. Then there's uh, like there's the dwarves. There's um, this one particular. Like there's not really any way you could tell them really apart that by that much. They're kind of all the same sort of Gimli-esque type character, but uh, like there's one guy. Uh, I think his name was Rule or a Mule or something. And he had to, like these eyes that were like all buggy. It was like, mm, like just smiling and all the time. And I'm like, she's she's life. She's made of life. She's the one. She's the one who can bring life to this world again. And he's going all smiley, and his eyes are all pop, like, like really wide open. And I'm thinking like, what is this guy on? Is he like? <clears throat> Like, is he spending a lot of time sniffing the mushrooms from the dark forest? Yeah, because we saw that those things can make you hallucinate big time in the movie. Uh, and, um, oh yeah, and, like the lot of, that thing that was weird was, um, the dark forest. They say, like, the queen has no powers there, but would you think that the dark evil queen's powers would be enhance when she's in the dark evil forest you know that doesn't really make sense but, but uh <clears throat> on the whole um even despite all of its flaws and so forth i still give it a good four out of five. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and a side note like i know it sounds piggish but like what like uh the queen is supposed to be Asking this magic mirror who the the fairest one of the all is, and like all the time it's always like you are the fairest of them all. But then like out of nowhere, suddenly Snow White, played by Kristen Stewart of Twilight fame, is he says no, Snow White is now the fairest, and I'm like uh no. <laughs> I mean I know this sounds shallow, but <clears throat> yeah. Kristen Stewart is not anywhere near, like, she's average at best, in my I mean, any, but, just, um, maybe they're talking about, like, inside beauty or something, like, oh, uh, Charlize Theron's queen is, like, really freaking hot, but on the inside is she's ugly and horrible, and then, like, then... Snow White is coming in, and she's like maybe average, like maybe cute. She's cute and average, but like on the inside, she's like really 
there's like a lot of goodness in her or something and some sort of pure heart thing going on. And I don't really know what the hell's up with the whole her bringing life to the world or whatever. <clears throat> but like I said, even despite its flaws, I still give this a uh, 4 out of 5. I found it very enjoyable. And the only way you're not going to like it is if you're like some sort of nitpicky douche or something. <clears throat> like it, like I said, good. And although I'd be lying if I said that, considering the fact that I chose, um, had to choose between this MIB3 and the Avengers, and I chose this, and i kind of regretting it. But, you know. <clears throat> oh, and while I was out watching, and while I was watching this movie, I saw the trailer for Total Recall, and like any anybody else thinking this movie's gonna suck? I mean, I'm <laughs> right here, one here. <laughs> like, like, what's the like in the in the in the '84 movie? There's kind of some talk about like is um like is it a dream or is this reality and they kind of like asked this question like one time that i saw and from what i saw in the trailer um or like they, they only bring this like twice like once and there's the doctor that comes up and then again when like near the ending or at the ending but I have a feeling that, from what I saw in the trailer, they're going to be, you know, playing this up way more in the new version. And, yeah, I'm kind of guessing that's going to cause it uh, a lot of harm and going to make the movie much less, you know, much, much worse. Anyway, that, that's my opinion on that. Well, anyway, I'm... Till till next time, I'm your host signing off. See ya.